The South African Rand has lost close to 16% in value this year. Its value has been affected by the volatility and uncertainty in key glo global events. Tony Bell, CIO of Unani Fund Managers, joins us from our Cape Town studio to share his expectations for the Rand's performance and investor sentiment for the second quarter of 2013. Tony, it's always a pleasure. You've just sat through the, the interview with David Galloway and he shared his views on global versus local. I'd just like to get your views on whether you agree with him that there's more value in global equities than in local equities. Sure, Bronwyn. Um, the way we look at the South African market, we see a little bit of a dichotomy in valuation. The story for the last two to three years has really been about the market and investors chasing those companies that have been able to maintain their earnings power. And in a low interest rate environment, if you capitalize those earnings over the longer term, you get much higher share prices, which is what we've seen. So if we have a look through the local market, we have a number of shares that are very familiar to the viewers out there, Naspas, Aspen, uh, companies like Richmond and Breweries that are all trading on multiples on a forward basis, in other words, taking next year's earnings into account of around 25 plus uh, against a market which has got an average PE of around 16. If we look on the flip side, we can get a lot of companies that are very much out of favor. Uh, some of the construction stocks, Old Mutual, for example, IT companies like Pinnacle that are trading on single digit PEs as well as some of our banks. So the question we ask ourselves is really where is the margin of safety in the local market and aren't we overpaying for that earnings growth that is still going to come through from the very recognized names but a lot of it's in the share price. We saw some of that in the consumer stocks a little while ago and you can see with recent results uh, of ShopRite the, 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 the environment for retailers is getting a lot tougher and those shares had uh, a month or two ago way, way exceeded the ability of the company to deliver, sorry, of, of the companies to deliver the earnings that were being priced into the shares. So we see investors having to face a little bit of a conundrum in terms of where to place uh, their investment positions given this very wide dispersion in PE in the markets well, on a forward basis. What are, are the key risks, in your opinion, also just going back to the discussion <coughs> with, with David? on the, well, the key risks for the investment environment, globally and locally? The, the key risk we see is not really an interest rate shock. What we observe is that central banks have now started to use policy statements to effect some price change in the markets. If you cast your mind back to the height of the Eurozone crisis, uh, Mr. Draghi merely mentioned that he would do whatever it takes and we had a dramatic retracement in the yields in Spanish bonds, in Italian bonds, Portuguese bonds, Greek bonds and if you go through and do the analysis post that statement Mr. Draghi in fact did very little but the power of the central bank and the positioning that they take has had quite an impact on markets and we see a very very similar movie playing out at the moment with Dr. Bernanke. When he talks of tapering, he actually doesn't talk about the raising of interest rates, but the impact that he's trying to generate is for interest rates in the, in the US to move from an exceedingly uh, low real yield to a more normalized position where the system can start to function more normally as the US economy recovers. If you've got negative real yields, in simple terms, um, money is almost for free and the leverage that we've seen into financial markets by people borrowing in dollars and investing or speculating as you would choose into markets like the South African Rand has, has reached quite high levels. And I think the concern that central banks have, particularly Dr. Bernanke, is that he has unleashed essentially a liquidity wave on financial markets the ebb and flow of which is quite hard to predict. So where we see the major risk is in not in interest rate shocks, but in a dislocation in the currency markets because of one, one or other mishaps in the liquidity flows as investors change sentiment. And we saw strong evidence of that in uh, June when we had a massive repatriation of investments around the world back into the dollar. The dollar strengthened, 
the rand weakened and Tony, everyone got quite a shock that, in the process. On that rand weakness, and, and perhaps here let's just throw forward to the, uh, the interest rate decision that we've got on the local front tomorrow from the South African Reserve Bank. Of course, everybody expecting the rate to remain unchanged, but potentially for Jill Marcus to take a, a more dovish tone. Uh, what are your thoughts and, and bring it back to the impact on the currency, the local unit? Sure. Our, our sense for the RAND in the very short term is it could in fact strengthen. We see the dollar as having reacted quite strongly to the sh shock I've just spoken about in June, but we see central banks calming investor sentiment, stability in the US Treasury rate. So we, we're quite sympathetic with uh, Jill Marcus's position because ideally given the slower pace of economic growth in South Africa at the moment, she would like to add some stimulus, but she really can't because if you add the current account and the trade deficits, South Africa is one of the most vulnerable emerging market currencies given the twin deficits now amount to about 11% of GDP. So I'm not sure she's in a position to really be more accommodative on the interest rate front. We already have negative real yields and I think the statement that she's likely to make is that rates like the Fed will stay on hold for longer, as David said, uh, that's the indi indicative uh, stance that we've had from the Fed. And that will allow investors some sort of latitude in terms of interest rate relief, uh, knowing that interest rates won't be, uh, won't be pushed up. So again, I think it's the words that will carry the value, not uh, a movement in interest rates.